the Viper made a deal with the local mafia to up the odds. <laughs> 20 seconds till the next game starts, guys. Game 8 coming up. All right, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to game eight between these two fantastic players. I would like to remind everyone watching this, whether it is YouTube or Twitch or 2017 or 2022, that this was 3-0 Viper at one point. Now it is 4-3 Viper. Leary has gone 3-1 in the last four games to put himself in this position. If he wins this game, he takes it to the final game. I'm so hyped. Puns for Leary in the blue. Viper is in the red. Viper is playing as the Ethiopians, a city he definitely likes. And we'll talk about the maps here. Man, I'm so excited. I mean, I know I'm a caster, but I just cannot contain my excitement to see the rest of, of today's best of nine. I like the map for Leary an awful lot. Finally, he gets the better map. He has wood line here, wood line here, wood line here, plenty of wood. His struggle in the last game was that he was down the sheep, remember? And he was down the frickin' scout. So he lost his scout, didn't know where Viper was, and he lost four sheep, still came back. And here he can wall to protect his main gold. He can build his barracks and stable or archery range and whatnot. This choke point, and then slowly wall on the left side, which isn't that important to him. So I really like his position there. The Viper's map isn't bad, but it's not as good. Because everything's so far away. In fact, if you're watching this on the Twitch stream and not on YouTube, if you remember the the first map when Leary called a re and he was Chinese, this is very similar to it. Because he has random golds and stones surrounding him in a circle, but his wood lines are further than his golds and stones, which makes it awkward. Still a map that he can have success with. We're gonna choose this wood line, and his golds on the back here. He could wall it as well, but I don't know. It's hard to play these maps because you never know what choke point your opponent's going to approach from, and you can't realistically wall it. So I'm sure Viper will prove us wrong. So Ethiopians. What's cool about Ethiopians? Chat. They, they fire faster. So you give a guy like Viper Britons, we know what he can do. You give a guy like Ethiopians, you know what he can do because the archers fire faster. They also get plus 100 food and plus 100 gold each age they advance. So that gives you some more resources for upgrades and or man at arms, which is what we see frequently. They have a very strong beginning to each age because of that bonus. And I would say that they have a very strong chance against the Huns. Even though the Huns have a versatile tech tree, it's fluid, you don't get housed, you save the wood from not building houses, you have the cheap cavalry archers. If Viper gets in a position where he can mass crossbows and micro, then the cavalry archers might not be as good. So I think in this game, Leary needs to use the mobility of his units because cavalry archers are faster and knights are faster. He needs to use the mobility of his units to take fights, not the strength of his units because Viper's got to be taking big fights in one or two areas, not four or five areas, which is what Leary would want. Spooky Sean is gifting a ton of subs right now. Normally, I don't shout out during the tournament finals, but thank you so much. Uh, Ornlu asks if this is my favorite Civ. Well, these are two of my favorite Civs right here, yes. I absolutely love the Huns. I absolutely love the Ethiopians. And I want to see what the players are going to do. But check this out. Viper has a scout out here. <laughs> Look at that. I was so confused. I was thinking, how did Viper not find his sheep? You know what? That's good, though, because Leary was unlucky many, many times. Look, look at this. <laughs> the sheep were there, and Viper missed it. Ah, oh, such a noob. This guy doesn't deserve to be in a tournament final. And Leary's going to get two sheep, which shouldn't put a huge dent in Viper's plans, but at least he's going to get two sheep. And Viper is going to drush. And again, I foresee the same strategy, where it's not a drush fast castle, but he will... He will drush, and then he will try and advance the feudal age and use that stronger economy to make the archers a bit later. Now, Leary might expect this. Leary has the scout in the perfect position. 
He didn't see the main goal of the Viper, but he's looking for the militia. I believe he saw them come out of the barracks. Also, he saw the villagers running to the deer. And yep, confirming his suspicions, if he was just suspicious. And he sees the wolf. And he is also drushing as well. And that wolf is on Leary's side. So Gaia slightly on Leary's side to start this one off. And you hear the wolves in the background. <laughs> I think both players are doing the same thing. This is the build I saw both of them do so frequently in the lead up to this tournament. And if you look back at the first three games, Leary went for a lot of men at arms with weak eco versus the Drush with strong eco, which didn't really fit his skill set. And okay, this will be awkward. Can Viper find a Vill pick? Drush is actually doing work for both players. Viper close to losing a Vill as well. I think Leary has rectified the situation here. He's on his way to Feudal. While Viper's gonna lose this vilt, Leary could trap it in. I have faith that Leary could kill this villager. He just needs to block it. <laughs> a beautiful move from Leary. At killing Viper's vill. And Viper's resources. Yeah, so they're trying to do the same thing. Viper has a weaker economy, though. In my opinion, because he doesn't have the sheep underneath his TC right now. Sure, he has one more farm, but he also lost a vill. Lost access to his deer. Great start for Leary, and he'll have a head start with the production of archers. And Viper really can't distract Leary too much. I guess he can distract here. I lied, but it, it all goes back to the Drush again. Viper does have more militia. Could find a Vill pick. He's going to surround these villagers. He's going to find a Vill pick here. In fact, he could find more than one, potentially, if Leary's not paying attention. Uh, at the same time, though... Oh, jeez, this is so tough. Viper... Close to losing her. I can't tell if there's a dead Viper body underneath the Leary carcasses. I think Leary lost one. I think Viper lost one in total. Well, there are the archery ranges as we expected for Leary. He's gonna get them before Viper. Viper will get the food and the gold boost, though. Well, congrats to everyone who's getting the free subscription to the stream. Spooky Sean, I know it's coming from you, dude, so you're the best. Thanks for supporting me. And flashbacks from the game where it was Vikings versus Indians. And we saw pretty much the same thing. And they went skirmishers. Leary's going to make one archer. And he's going to add skirms then while Viper... Sorry, he doesn't have his buildings yet. I imagine Viper will go skirms too, because he took all those bills he had. On gold and sent them to the wood. 27 bills for Leary. 25 for Viper. Who in the chat wants to see game nine? Like, I don't care who you want to win this. I know that a lot of people like to cheer for Viper, but if you want Viper to win, you want him to win in game nine, right? If you want Leary to win, you want Leary to win in game nine. Okay, we saw the micro from Leary before. <clears throat> and Leary's going to have the hill to start this one off. Also, he has a militia. And that one archer is going to get picked off. I don't get why Viper did it the one game, and I don't get why Leary did it this game. <laughs> like, why make the archer? You know the other guy's going to kill it. That could have easily been a skirmisher. You know, probably what happened was back at the archery range that archer got orders to be a skirmisher but he's too much of a rebel and he decided to be an archer instead because he thinks archers are cooler and he paid the price that order was for your order was for your safety my friend so it's really the archer's fault we'll see fletching for both players in a moment viper already has it leary has it on the way in Pretty much equal numbers on the front after Viper sends out his next batch of skirmishers, but it's all about that micro, ladies and gentlemen. And Viper's getting very close to the top of the hill, and yep, Leary's just not feeling confident. He's gonna run back. And you know what? There's two hills here. There's one in front of Viper, but there's also one here, so Leary will probably sit there. The most important thing to stress here is microing down your opponent's skirmishers. Eventually, that will give you the opportunity to make archers, but also you don't want to make the archer too early in the main fight. Because you'll lose them. And I don't get this decision from Leary. I guess now they're on 
even footing, but I didn't understand why he left the hill for the moment. He's going to force Viper away with some fantastic splitting action there. Look at Viper missing all those shots because of Leary's split. And then look at all the shots hitting that skirmisher. Okay, so Viper is adding archers now. That does surprise me. This is exactly what happened before when Viper was Vikings. He added the archers to this stage. And he paid the price. So I will say at that stage, he also... That game, he added one in the very beginning, which he lost for free. And then he lost a lot of skirmishers. I heard the stable for Viper. He's not going to make the same mistake twice. He's going to add the scout. And assuming the trades go well for him, and so far they have as he's been on this hill. Oh, there's another good trade for Viper. This will actually be a nice position because... Okay, there is there is a stable for Leary. Never mind. <laughs> Peekaboo. They're trying to keep it secretive, but they're both doing it at the same time. All right, so army numbers pretty much dead even. These archers will help Viper when the scouts join the fight. I don't think either player will show their scouts until they maybe get some more scout upgrades. Now, it is slightly easier for Leary at this stage, because he doesn't have to build houses, which means his villagers are constantly working. Not to mention he doesn't have to waste the wood for houses, so he can build uh, pretty much anything earlier, because everything costs wood. And you can, you can tell it's a little bit more fluid for him. Viper's only on two scouts while Leary's at four. And Leary's the first of bloodlines as well. Viper adding an archer and a skirmisher, so he's mixing it up out of his archery ranges. I think with these two kills he got a moment ago, he evened it up. And this, oh man, this is the perfect time to fight for Leary. In fact, Viper can't see this. Viper cannot see this. He's moving to the left. The scouts are on the right. Will the scouts loop in? There he has five of them. He was considering it. Bad loss for him there, but good pick off to redeem himself. Oh man, this is so tense. One for one now. Waiting for scale barding. Viper. Oh my goodness, this is so cool. Viper, he's going to come in with the scout trap now. So Leary's going to be caught out. Leary just now seeing this. I, I, I think, again, Leary can kill these archers. But it all depends on micro. There's going to be a heck of a lot more upgrades for Leary. Leary's killing the archers with the skirmishers. The scouts are doing work for both players, though. And keep in mind, there's no real counter for Leary. For Viper Scouts, except his own scouts. He doesn't have archers in the mix here. But I guess if he is able to trade, if Leary's able to trade versus the archers, he will have stronger scouts. And uh, man, this is awkward for Viper now. Leary slightly leading with the military, not to mention that he already has the upgrades. Viper forced to make scouts now, or he will forfeit all map control. Better fight for Leary, that's for sure. I think Viper is just going to forget about it. He's not going to create more scouts. He's already behind the momentum. He sees his opponent has more upgrades than him. He didn't get any upgrades. He's going to look towards the Castle Age and try and do something there. Leary and Viper getting Wheelbarrow at pretty much the same time. And Leary is... Well, he's at least added one more scout. No, three more scouts. So he's going to be later to Castle Age, but he will have all the map control and be able to be aggressive. But this is also the benefit of houses, guys. Houses are acting as a nice little wall here for Viper. No doubt about it, he's going to have the wall behind because Leary's going to try and batter his way in with the scouts. Viper's going to mass his archers, wait for Castle Age, wait till he can make some knights, wait till he can make some crossbows. And that fight does not determine the winner of this game. Now, I do think that if Viper hits Castle Age well ahead of time, Leary could be in trouble because two or three knights out of the stable. And the skirmishers and the scouts for Leary die. However, if Leary keeps his skirms alive, if he clicks up the castle soon when he's getting there, then these skirms will be elite skirms. And those elite skirms can deal with Viper's crossbows, which are going to be so important to Viper if he wants to win this game. There's about a minute and a half difference with the uptimes. Leary has more vills. Leary has more map control and more military. But he's also kind of open in this area of his base. I guess he's, instead of walling here, he's going to wall towards his TC here, which is fine. Yeah, and he's finishing the walls. I wonder if there's nerfs for Leary. I think if I'm 3-0 down to Viper, 
and then I take it to 4-3, and I have this amount of map control, I am nervous. And I'm 24, Leary's 15, maybe he had a birthday. I, we don't know, actually know, but he's, he's really young, and <laughs> he, he just deserves so much respect for his skill. Especially because Viper's been dominant for so long, you know? And haven't been many players, maybe Mr. Yo, who's been active for a very long time, haven't been many players that could rival Viper like this. Jordan once upon a time as well, of course. Okay, so it's going to be two stables and two archer ranges then for Leary. Viper's on one stable and two archer ranges. So he will go with a few knights to clean up the skirms, and then he will go for crossbow. Well, let's see what upgrades he gets here. Yeah, he's going to go for Bodkin Arrow. The knights will immediately come out. Leary scrambles home. And, ooh, Leary... He had a villager. I guess he wanted to build a siege workshop, but now he realizes he's going to have to wait on that. Now Viper needs to push. Now we get to see Viper Micro. Will he go for the early university, or will he go for a TC? Siege Workshop, actually. Huh. I wasn't expecting that option, but Viper might be feeling like those skirmishers will cause him problems. So he'll add a Magno. This is a really good position for Leary still, because he'll have Elite Skirmisher. He didn't lose these units. And he's going to have Knights. And he can add Cavalry Archers then. It's such a smooth transition for Leary. Yeah, so Leary on his profile and on his stream, etc., had told people he was 17. I guess I'm going to have to repeat this forever. <laughs> he told people he was 17. When I arrived at Gamescom, I was walking up to the stage and MBL and Leary were talking. And MBL is going, you lied to me. You lied to me. And then I, we found out that Leary had just confessed he was actually 15. But he's actually six foot, so... <laughs> I mean, you could have guessed 17. A chain barding for Leary now. He does have all the attack upgrades on his skirms, and he's getting ballistics. And Viper is going to try and counterattack. But guess who's going to find him? Leary's going to find him, and Viper's going to have to run away. You can't fight this. It was so important that Leary kept Viper away from his base. Viper was hoping he could boom at home, go for an efficient trade on the economy of Leary. Ballistics completes now, and this army's just going to have to run. Yeah, I'm six foot two. He's pretty tall. Maybe he was five nine or five ten. I'm sorry. <laughs> don't you can quote me on the age, but don't quote me on the height, okay? This is interesting. Viper snuck in here with a knight. He might kill a villager, actually. This is sloppy. I, I guess Leary wasn't expecting, neither was I, <laughs> to see this random knight in his base. Yeah, Viper will kill one vill. Viper will lose his knights. Viper has evaded the skirmishers, though. I think once Leary doesn't find Viper here, he should send an army this way, expecting the crossbow. But he needs to be careful, because if I were him, and I wanted to build a new TC, I'd probably build it on the other side of this wood line. And Viper, he's going to go to that direction. Go to that side. Two Maganels for Viper. Fully walled in his base. He's getting ballistics now as well. Maganels can kill the skirms, but the knights can kill the Maganels. It looks like the knights, because of their mobility, on the way back, just to protect things for Leary. And yeah, I don't think Viper will do too much here. He'll just distract. Viper getting scale mail? Is that intentional? He's one barracks. Oh, he's making pikemen. Oh, it was intentional. Viper is actually adding pikemen. He has killed one villager on this woodline, but these crossbows will die. Yeah, they're all. Viper needs to go through here, I think. Otherwise, he's going to die to the knights. So he's going to have to trade. Yeah, Viper also getting Karto, but it's weird that. I mean, if he honestly feels like he needs Pikemen, I say advantage Leary all the way. Because oh, the distract from Leary here with the knight. <laughs> Trying to out micro ballistics, but, uh. You know, Pikemen will die to these skirms. Pikemen will die to the cheap hun cav archers, assuming Leary creates them. I mean, one time, Viper was forced to go into Pikemen, and I'd say Leary kind of threw his position in that game in hindsight because he could have added the archers. But Viper is just 
Stock in his base now. Okay, if he trades well versus skirmishers here, that'll be great. Leary did notice though. Uh, I unfortunately wasn't on Leary's point of view. I don't think he saw a pikeman in there. Leary back to this precious hill. Trying to bait Viper out. Versus forgetting about this. Okay. Has his own Maganel. Viper was baited out. The Knights go in. Viper with the attack ground. Pikemen are here as well. How will the Skirmishers and the Maganel do for Leary behind this? Oh my gosh. How did that attack ground work? I guess it worked because Viper's Maganel went down, but Viper killed that uphill. Still, though, the trade much better for Leary. Look at the Skirms here. Look at the crossbows going down. This is a unit that Viper needs to have success with. Leary has 15 more villagers at this rate. We will see a final game, guys. Now, it's not over yet, but Viper took some horrible losses. He lost a lot of crossbows. He lost all his pikemen. He lost three Maganels. <clears throat> it could have been even worse had he not killed this Maganel from Leary. It's a little bit awkward for Leary now. Yeah, as he has to replenish his forces, and Viper's replenishing forces very close. And the attack round from Leary going to miss. Viper going to try and bring this back with his micro, it seems. But you know, every time he goes to micro down a knight, he's running into the elite skirmishers. And every time he sends out a Maganel, Leary is there with a the knight to just forget about the Maganel. <laughs> he's killed it. Look at the split there from Leary. Still going after the crossbows, maintaining his vill lead. In fact, he's he's growing with his vill lead now. 20 extra vills. Viper's making knights, but knights don't have the upgrades that Leary has. Leary has bloodlines and he has plus two defense. And man, he's behind. He's so far behind. Best player in the world, rivaled by a 15-year-old kid. Kid who took him to the finals in Germany. And at this rate, we'll take him to game nine. If Viper can't branch out his economy somewhere, if Viper can't get a foothold on this hill. I mean, he's holding here, but look at the amount of crossbows he's lost here. And still, it's just... Oh, nice nice sneak there with the Maganel. Just doesn't seem like he has enough here. Leary killing another Maganel. Look at Leary's economy behind this. Three TCs. He's a lot of uh, 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 villagers on stone. He's going to fall back now, but I don't think he's incredibly worried. Now, what Viper could do is get to the point where he can make three, four, five archery ranges, and then the skirmishers don't matter because the crossbows fire so much. If he continues to take good trades, then he can mass the crossbows, and even the knights won't matter then. He's finally taken back this hill. And this is poor from Bleary running back. Viper should probably go to stone, go for a castle here. I think Leary will go for a castle as well. Actually, he just sold some of his stone. Interesting. You can't give momentum to the crossbow numbers for the Ethiopian player. And also keep in mind that the pikeman upgrade was free for Viper. If Viper ends up clicking up the imp, he gets halberdier upgrade free. The halbarbalest combo is deadly versus Huns. Thumb ring for Leary. Still adding skirms though, adding a lot more knights. I don't think we're going to see imp anytime soon. The Viper now adds a monastery. This is Leary's point of view. This is the hill he knows fondly. He's gotten many kills on this hill this game. He knows all about Viper's knights as well, and he knows all about the Maganels as he tries to avoid... Wow! <laughs> he... Both players are going to lose their Maganels, but I'm still so amazed at how good these guys are to get trades in these situations. Like, that kill there was sick from Leary. And also, the kill from Viper earlier, when Viper was down here, was pretty sick. That's stabilizing a little bit more for Viper. He doesn't have the economy. As Pikeman and a new TC now on his gold. That was the real issue with the hill as well. He didn't have the gold or the stone available. None of his stones. Viper selling wood now. And yeah, Viper's for sure trying to click up to Imp soon. Look at the resources he's banking. In fact, he stopped crossbow production. He's creating a few pikemen. He knows at the moment there's not a lot of skirms. So the real worry is the knights from Leary. And I think Leary wants to take an engagement in Castle Age. Viper using the market to try and click to Imp. 
So this would be the time for Leary to take the engagement. Leary stretch for resources. Leary wants to build a castle. If he's going to win this game, if he's going to continue in the series, he will do it by winning in the castle age here. And he's engaging with the knights, the skirmishers behind. The Maganels will die. The villagers from Leary going to build a castle, but I don't really like this fight at all for Leary. In fact, the Maganels still here for Viper. Viper's destroying the knights. They're all gone now. The skirmishers can't do anything. And now this is dangerous for Leary. This is where Viper could win the series because the castle was not meant to be here. It was meant to be here. Viper's crossbows are too strong. The pikemen were fully upgraded. There were so many of them. And the Maganel got some good shots on the skirms. And now it's tough. Now it's tough. Because you know you're behind in the, in the compositions. Leary still has a lot more economy. But what happened there was he produced knights to delay his imp time. And he has to decide, do I produce more or do I try and click the imp myself? And the answer is, I'm going to abuse that market. Worse than Dave does. <laughs> I'm going to go to imp as well. So all is not lost yet for Leary with the extra golds he has. But speaking of extra golds, look who's camping this one. Viper with his crossbows. So I think... Now that we see this, I think Viper should do this because he's going to get the upgrades first. I think he should send 5, 10 crossbows out around to try and raid the economy. Leary has good vision on the extra gold. He has good vision on this and good vision on this and good vision on this. And there's villagers on their way to that. Uh, meanwhile, Viper... I, mean, I really don't think Viper's in a position to get those extra golds until he takes a big fight. Adding the trebuchet now gets the free halb will send units this way and i think he's about to find that leary's on that gold okay leary needs to wall this off now i think he needs to wall here uh so he can stop the crossbow range i guess never mind that wouldn't help because of the cliff but it's all about late game now it's all about gold it's all about relics viper going out for the sneaky counter attack just looping around Leary's still not in Imp yet. He's sending his skirmishers on this hill. But he forgot about these villagers. And he's going to lose a few of his extra vills. I can't help but wonder what the game would be like if Leary still had all those knights. Would they really offer him much when there's free halb for Viper? I'm not so sure. Lots of skirms for Leary, but Viper has the range. And Viper has the firing speed. Another castle back at home for Leary. A wise decision because of the fact that he can be raided. And now Viper actually raiding with Halberdiers on this side. This is so awkward for Leary now because he was going Skirmisher and he was going Knights for so long. And Skirms are slow. He's losing map control. Viper just needs to continue to push in different areas and keep his opponent distracted. So we're going to see Hussar. We're going to see upgrades on the Skirms for Leary. And he continues to add Skirms. Hussar is for raiding, and he might be creating out of these stables. That way he can raid the economy from Viper on the left. But Leary's lost the castle, and he's going to lose the hill at this rate as well. And now Viper's going Onager. Onager didn't work for him last time, but Viper didn't have the map control. Viper didn't have that momentum. But this time he does. This is so cool to focus on now. You see, Viper trying to get this gold, Leary here with Hussars. Leary trying to get this gold, Viper here with Arbales. Viper's still not here. Onagers are a risk when Hussars are here, though. Hussars can kill the Onagers. Onager is a huge investment. And I think as the game goes on, if Leary can max out his techs, I actually prefer Huns because of their versatility and their speed. And he's going to start using that now. Viper wants to go with one big fight. I said it early on. One big fight. He doesn't want Leary to be in a position to counter or to split up armies. And this is exactly what it's going to do to Viper. He's going to have to split up armies and deal with that raiding. But will Leary have the time as Viper goes to cement his position forward with the castle? The Viper's still taking that gold away from Leary. Viper hasn't moved out to that one yet. A look at Leary's resources. Sorry, that's Viper's resources. Leary's resources... And it's looking pretty good. He's closing in on 200 population, but that can change if he tries to... 
<laughs> Tempt fate with the onagers. He really doesn't need to fight this. But this allows easier access to golds for Viper on the right hand side. He still has a lot of his economy here. He still has a gold. Oh, he actually has skirmishers here. Forcing a, a tower out of Viper. Viper even making a light cap. DC's gone down, but he's collected most of the gold here. Also, he's defending here nicely. First the Arbalest, the Viper will clean that up. And that that's a mistake from Viper to send the Arbs to the right-hand side, because in come the Hussars. I don't think Viper knew there were this many Hussars back here. The Onagers will go down. And now Leary has a trebuchet to attack this castle. So a little little bit of debated action. Where the Arbalest were debated to the right-hand side. The Viper will still camp the gold, but... He's lost the momentum. And now more halberdiers are needed. And now some repairs are going to be needed by Viper if this trebuchet deploys on the castle again. That's exactly what I said about onagers. It can be tough. Now Viper has the Vil lead at the moment. Viper has two relics. Leary's fighting underneath this castle. I think he realizes that if he has the skirms here... The Skirms can kill pretty much everything except the Onagers. And every time he gets his opportunity, he will send the Hussars to those Onagers. Look at the micro from Leary. He's going to try and micro this down, isn't he? You know, the Trebuchets will take Viper's castle out. Viper doesn't have many Arbalests left. 150 pop for both. The military count's actually very close as well. That was a great trade for Leary as far as gold units go, but I think he needs to go back now that his Hussars are dead and the Onager's on the way. You know what? He has enough to finish off the Onager. What a freaking game here, guys. Even Viper adding in a few Light Cav versus the Skirms. Leary's still not having these golds, but neither does Viper. I'll show you the gold collected now on the bottom left. I'll get there eventually. There we go. Viper's actually collected more gold. Viper is repairing his castle. This is never the position you want to be in. You want to be the one attacking your opponent's castle. But Leary is going to lose this treb if he doesn't repair it. And he's actually going to pack up his trebuchets now. And he needs to mass military units once more. Because Viper's hill is so difficult for him. And now Viper will have some time to add more of the halberdiers, which he's probably lacking a bit of versus the Hussars. Really just came down to Amazing Micro, I think, from Leary to use the Hussars versus the Onagers and then Skirm to kill everything else. These players, man. They are truly the best two players in the world. I'm trying to get back to the main part of this overlay. If you guys watch my stream a lot, you know I have this struggle. It never takes me back to the main part, but it's stabilized. Neither player take any big engagements right now, so... They're just mainly pushing out for map control, and, and Viper is going to get that gold now. Leary has been a pest. Viper was up 3-0. Now it is 4-3. Viper needs to finish him off now. He does not want to take it to the last game. But man, how to call this one. Both players have at least one relic. Viper has good gold control, but... He doesn't have good control of the rest of the map. There we go. Now you can see the Vil counts. Now you can see the military counts. Dead even. And we've already seen before how the Onagers can die fast. And the Viper are actually going to lose these trebuchets. I think. Oh, man. You know what? That was wise from Viper. Had he used his Onager to attack the Hussar, he would have killed his own treb. That was wise thinking. He did that in the first place, though. Okay, this is where the gold becomes more and more important. An hour into the game. Lycav going to kill those Vils. Down here, Viper, because of his castle position, completely secure on that gold. But is it worth it to lose the Onagers to the Hussars? I still feel like Viper in a commanding position because of the hill and because of the fact that Leary is losing a lot of Hussars to kill the Onagers. But you never know. But it's so tough for Leary. I mean, at this stage, what else can he do? He doesn't want to waste gold. He doesn't want to go Cavalier. Because the Hussars... Or, sorry, the Halberdiers will kill the Cavalier. 
And he definitely doesn't want to go cavalry archers either, at least in the main fight, because of the range of the siege now that Viper's adding. And Viper has bombard cannons here as well. A nice shot. <laughs> but Leary, he spots the bills here. How stars for Viper gonna clean that up? And Leary, he's focusing back on this side where he had villagers on gold. Viper getting a few kills with these Hussars too. You can tell the rating is adding up for both players. Oh, and here, there's a hole here. This could be big. If the, There's a hole on either side. The Hussars will get in. And Viper has a lot more vills. But it's probably because he keeps queuing them up. Because he knows he's losing them. And now the Hussars here as well. Man. <laughs> Where do you want to prioritize your population? You only have 200 population, guys. Where are you going to send your pop? The Vill's dropping like flies in both bases, both economies. The Viper has no response to this. His farms will be idled as well. This has been the deadliest raid we've seen thus far. And meanwhile, Viper gonna lose Trebuchet's on the front. And back to what I said about population, he doesn't have a lot of pop space next to his castles. And this could be a moment for Leary to take the castle. I wonder, wonder if Leary will see this Bombard Cannon and pick it off. I don't, I don't know if he can afford to do that because he needs his own meat versus Viper's, uh, Viper's Hussars, but yeah, Castle's gonna drop. Castle is going to drop and Viper could lose a Bombard Cannon. It's not necessarily that Viper is misclicking or choosing a bad fight, it's that he truly hasn't realized what's going on because this is snowballing in his base. He was at 140 bills and he's at 107 now. And once the Castle goes down, this will be the time for Leary to fight this. Viper has the score lead, but look at the composition. Where are the onagers from Viper? Can he afford them? He really cannot afford them. He doesn't have this gold. He, well, he's killing Leary again on that gold. Leary can still take this. Viper doesn't have it. Two to two on relics. The raid continues from the left side. I think the versatility of Huns, the speed of Huns is paying off for Leary. And we might, just might, see this next castle go down for Viper. And are we going to see the game 9? Are we going to see this go to game 9? Are we going to see the comeback for Leary? Surely not. Like, surely not. But he seems like he's in the zone now. He's at 191 population. Viper buying the resources he needs. He, he's stretched if you look at what he has after that eco raid. Oh, this is awful for Viper. He doesn't have the wood, guys. Look, he needs food too, but he cannot reseed farms. His economy is in an awful position. So he needs amazing trades with the onagers he has now and the crossbows or, or sorry arbalest he has now if he doesn't get those trades he's in trouble and that's actually a perfect position for viper to fight to be honest and the onager is still going to stay alive oh this is disastrous for leary potentially viper's repairing the castle i think the castle should drop but this onager has killed two trebs the castle's still up Okay, now it goes down. Oof, man. He, he dropped about 10, 15 Hussars in this choke point to the Arbless. The Arbless don't have the castle to protect them once again. I thought for a moment all the Trebs could drop and all the Arbless would kill everything left there. I don't know, guys. I mean, I'm looking at this more and more. It's still so close. It is still the Viper and still the Onagers are there and that's a beautiful shot. But the, can Viper balance out this economy? I think every single Arbalest that, that dies for Viper now is a huge loss for him. He doesn't have the food to create many Hussars, and they're not that strong anyway as Ethiopians. Maybe Leary should settle down a little bit. Make sure he gets bills on the gold nonstop. Make sure he raids with Hussars nonstop, which he's doing. And just kills production buildings on this hill. 86 military for Leary. Viper, he's at 35 military. He might be able to hold, but he really has no answer to the versatility of the Huns, and we're gonna see game nine. Hype! Oh my gosh. Viper was up 3 0. 3 0. It is now 4 to 4. This is the most hyped I've ever been on the Age of Empires stream. Oh my goodness, that was such an incredible decision from Leary to go with Skirms and go with Hussars. So sick.
So sick. These guys are so good, and it's gonna really hurt to see one player lose this. But guys, they both deserve this. <laughs> they both deserve this. Oh wow. Okay, so as I gather my thoughts here, thank you, King Nikki, for the 14 month resub. I appreciate the support, everybody, with the subs today. And here's the units killed, units lost. The largest army was made of primarily six trebuchets, a ton of skirmishers, and a ton of hussars. And even though Viper did collect more gold that game, Leary collected a lot of everything else. And he has taken this to game nine. And I am kind of speechless. I said I thought Leary could win this, but I didn't think it would be in this fashion. I don't know what else to say except wow. We're at 2,000 viewers. Community has been amazing today. I think if we get 130 more viewers, then we are going to be at a channel record <clears throat> for like non-hosted viewer numbers. All right, guys. Well, certainly a lot of people know who Leary is now, whether he's 15, 19, 4, or 27. doesn't matter. We know who Leary is. Oh, what sibs are left? I'm sorry. Yeah, we should talk about that instead of age. Okay, so that leaves Malians for Leary, right? He didn't go with Malians. 